we want to show you something. We've used this video in other Salmon Water Now productions. Here's another one. Both were shot in the summer of 2009. Now we zip forward to the Memorial Day weekend of this year. This is that same stream, no longer lazy. And here's that rocky cascade about a half mile from the stream. This water is salmon water, or at least it used to be. Now it's heading to the Central Valley as part of the blueprint for bullies. Take a good long look at this water, because the biggest bullies in the valley are pushing hard to make it the law of the land that this water is forever their water. If they succeed, there would be enormous consequences for everyone in California. These are the faces that say the words that mean that salmon don't matter, that your interests don't matter. By any measure of success, the Central Valley Project Improvement Act and the implementation of the Endangered Species Act have been an abject failure. What we're hearing from the opponents of this legislation is we want to keep doing things exactly the way we've done them for the last 20 years. Well, the way we've done them for the last 20 years, the way we've done things for the last 20 years has failed. It has failed. Farmers surrendered in 1992. The farmers surrendered in 1994. The farmers surrendered with the San Joaquin River settlement. And so, really, you only have a war from one side. And that's from the radical environmental groups that are massacring the people that live in our communities. Protecting endangered species is a worthy goal, and worthy goals need to be pursued with common sense and sound science, not left-wing ideology and junk science. The fact of the matter is, is the Central Valley has been a target with a bullseye on it in which they say, aha, these folks are farmers, they're isolated, they're small in numbers, we can take the water from them. That's the bottom line. This water belongs to all of us. It's a public trust resource. If they get their way, water rights law would change. It would benefit those who sign contracts for water, knowing full well that water deliveries for them are never guaranteed, a situation they are intent on changing. If that happens, the environment and people both lose. The salmon fishermen can still fish, they just can't fish for salmon. Congressman Devin Nunes is the author of H.R. 1837. This naked grab for the public's water is called the San Joaquin Valley Water Reliability Act. He and his mostly Republican colleagues are pushing the agenda of corporate agribusiness to capture unlimited amounts of water water that in many cases would be dumped on toxic problem soil, land that will inevitably be fallowed because selenium and other poisons and salt will make that land unsuitable for growing. By the time that happens, it will be too late for salmon. The bullies that dominate the discussion about California agriculture will have won. The wild runs of salmon and the ecosystems that support them will be destroyed. Taxpayers and water ratepayers will learn that they've been duped into subsidizing water and water delivery projects for a small number of wealthy irrigation districts. 
And that is the blueprint that the bullies of Westlands and their friends have drafted to get their way, to ultimately own the water rights so they can sell it to the highest bidders for huge profits to real estate and industrial developers. And when the salmon are gone, they won't be back. Of course, that's not how they talk about it. Here are excerpts from the hearing on the bill, along with counterpoints provided by experts who have looked at the blueprint that Westlands and their political handmaidens are working hard to implement. If the measure of success is how much water we take away from farmers versus how many fish we save or how we restore the, the environment, then it has been a success because it has taken hundreds of thousands of acre feet, millions of acre feet away from farmers. Birmingham and others want the Delta water. They want the Delta farmers gone. This bill goes after the water rights seniority system. Their accusation is that everybody's ganging up on the poor farmers in the San Joaquin. I would ask, what have farmers in the Delta given up? What have the upstream water users given up? If everybody has to give up, give up something, then let's ask these other people to give up something before you come to take more water away from us. There's plenty of farmland to grow crops. The increase in almonds and pistachio trees are for export crops. Almonds are not a native species and are amply grown for the American market and for American food in the Sacramento Valley. California's Central Valley was devastated in 2009 and 2010 by the deliberate diversion of hundreds of billions of gallons of water away from Central Valley agriculture to satisfy environmental edicts for salmon and delta smelt. You blame the fish, but you screw the other farm. The implementation of those regulations exacerbated the dry conditions and the, in, the resulting water supply impacts for contractors, both state and federal, south of the Delta. It's obviously the Obama administration's position and the, uh, and the Jerry Brown administration's position to continue to starve the San Joaquin Valley of water. I'm not a radical environmentalist. I'm a farmer. I'm a fisherman. I, I think that we can be both. I think as a society, we can ask to sustain both ways of life. And I visited the fields in the Central Valley that have been utterly decimated by these policies. It appears to me that a war continues to be waged uh, uh, against the, uh, the farm workers and farmers of the Central Valley. The bill is an attack on the effort to restore water to fisheries and wildlife. This bill is bad. It would put the federal government in charge, pushing aside California water rights law and laws to protect endangered species. Think about that. People that don't live here making decisions that we would have to accept. No wonder the California legislature, the Brown administration, and both of California's senators have stood up to say, no, it's not going to happen. But it doesn't phase the bill's proponents at all. This legislation provides clear congressional direction. It says, this is the way you're going to implement the Endangered Species Act, and here's what you must do to comply with the original intent, intent of Congress as it relates to the, um, the Central Valley Project Improvement so Act. This measure would actually conclude those water wars that have been so devastating to the economy of the Central Valley. Yes, it would. Who's the most radical? This is a takeover of California water by rich individuals for their own greed. I don't think that we can say this is the best we can do. And to hell with the fish. Uh, if they make it, they make it. If they don't, they don't. We need to farm, especially when you're impacting other folks' livelihoods, salmon fishermen, uh, you know, commercial and, and recreational sports fisheries uh, in the Delta are, are important to a lot of folks. If the rules change, and what we're going to do is to have states' rights individuals in the Congress expanding federal authority to get what they want, then why shouldn't we determine that there are certain cocktail napkin food crops that we don't need in this country? Maybe we don't need pomegranates. Maybe we don't need pistachios. Neither is a native, and neither is anything other than an addition to a good salmon dinner. These guys are on a mission to put Big Ag's selfish, greedy blueprint into law. 
Let your congressional representative know that states' rights matter, that it is not okay to let a small group of big and powerful agribusinesses have their way at the expense of California's environment. And tell President Obama, too. H.R. 1837, the bully's blueprint for taking unlimited water, needs to be killed. It needs to be replaced with thoughtful legislation that respects California's water rights. Because it's time for salmon water now.